In this redox reaction question, we see that we have potassium permanganate solution reacted with sodium alkylate solution in, of course, acid, which would be sulfuric acid to produce uh, the Mn2 plus ion, carbon dioxide gas, and water. Based on the mole ratio, we see there's a 2 to 5 mole ratio between the permanganate ions and the alkylate ions. In terms of the data that was given, we know that 0.2121 grams of sodium alkylate was used to make the solution. So you have to find the number of moles of, of sodium alkylate present in this mass. You can simply do the cross multiplication and we have the answer being 1.583 times 10 to minus 3 moles of sodium oxalate. Look at the mole ratio between the ions in the balance ionic equation given. The 2 to 5 mole ratio. So if we have 1.583 times 10 to minus 3 moles of sodium oxalate, we want to find the number of moles of um, permanganate ions present. And we can simply cross multiply and we'll get the solution or the answer as being 6.3. 3, 1 times 10 to minus 4 moles. So this number of moles of potassium permanganate were used now in this titration. I'm going to go to the next side of the board to point out what's over here. So we have 6.331 times 10 to minus 4 moles of permanganate ions present in the 43.31 cm cubes of solution. How many moles will be present in 1,000 cm cubes now, which will be the molarity of the solution? So you can find that answer by cross multiplying. So it's going to be 6.331 times 10 to the minus 4 times 1,000 cm cubes divided by 43.31 cm cubes. And that will give us 0 0.01462 moles present in this 1,000 cm cubes right here. Therefore, the molarity of the potassium permanganate solution would be 0 0.01462 moles per cm cube. We'll now move on to the next question. In this redox titration question, potassium dichromate is being reacted with iron 2 solution in the presence of acid. So from the balance ionic equation, we can see that one mole of dichromate ions react with six moles of Fe2 plus ions and 14 moles of acid to produce two moles of chromium-3 ions, six moles of Fe3 ions, and seven moles of water. So for potassium dichromate, this is the standard solution. So we know the concentration of it. 0.25 moles is present now in a thousand cm cubes, which is a one dm cube. So how many moles of potassium dichromate do we have in 26 cm cubes? If we cross multiply, we'll get the answers being 6.5 times 10 to minus 4 moles of dichromate. Look at the mole ratio for the ions. We have one mole of dichromate ions reacting now with 6 moles of Fe2 plus ions. If 6.50 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of dichromate ions were used in the titration, then 6 times this value of Fe2 plus ions would be used. So 6 times the um, 6.5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles now would give you 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So we have that right here. Now let me explain what is going on here. How do we find the concentration of the Fe2 plus solution that was used? Based on the mole ratio, we calculated the number of moles of Fe2 plus that would have been used in the um, reaction. We have 3.90 times 10 to minus 3 moles of Fe2 plus being present in 25.0 cm cubes. How many moles are present in 1,000 cm cubes, which would be 1 dm cube or 1 meter? We cross multiply and solve for x. And of course, the concentration now of the Fe2 plus solution would be 0.156 moles per dm cube. So this is how we generally approach redox questions. It's very similar to how you balance and work with the values for acid-based titrations. There's nothing hard about it. You always use the standard solution to find the number of moles of that was used. Then you use the mole ratio to find the number of moles of the analyte that was used, and then you find that value for one dm cube or a thousand cm cubes. So you have
Friday session.